So this is the first video in the study session series. I did make a previous video providing some context and I also explained my reasonings behind doing something like this. So I recommend watching that first and then come back to this video so that you know what to expect. But with that being said, let's begin. I'm going to be studying the proportions of the figure and to do this I was working through some of the earlier pages in Andrew Loomis's book, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. As always, I will list all of my source material in the description. I expect that I will be pulling information from a lot of places as I continue on this journey, learning as much as I can on the subject of anatomy. So, Loomis has a system when it comes to the proportions. Also, before I forget, these are the proportions of the male figure. The proportions for the female figure are different, but I will cover that in another video. For now, I am focusing on this system that Loomis has that involves dividing the figure into head units. So one unit is equal to the height of a head, and the male figure is eight head units tall. So I can draw out a line that will be the height of my figure and divide this up into apes by dividing it in half, dividing it again and then again. And it's easy to remember and I, I did a lot of research regarding proportions and I found that Loomis had what I thought was the most practical method. I know some people like to make the figure seven and a half heads, it really depends on what works for you. So here I am drawing out some of the diagrams that I write from the book and I'm doing this not only to help me memorise it all but also because I want to have this on a page in my book here so that I can always refer back to it if I need to. So I'll explain this head unit system even though Andrew Loomis himself will likely do a better job of that. I, I do recommend his books, they are very helpful. Anyways, the figure can be divided into eight equal units and as I said one unit is the height of a head and this is helpful because when you are drawing the figure you can use the head as a reference and compare the proportions of the other parts of the figure with it and so here I'm drawing out these front and back views along with these grid lines which indicate these eight units and where they cross the figure line 8 is the top of the head line 7 is the bottom of the chin so that is one head unit which is used to measure whereabouts other parts of the figure will be so line 6 crosses the nipples around the chest line 5 crosses the navel above the hips line 4 is around where the crotch will be line 3 is halfway between the crotch and the bottom of the knees and line 2 shows where the bottom of the knees are then line 1 is between the base of the feet and the bottom of the knees. Now I do recommend studying this yourself and spending some time learning these divisions. There's also some additional dividing lines here. The top of the shoulders are one third of a head unit down from line 7. The hips are one third of a head unit down from line 5. And the butt, which is obviously seen from the back, is one third of a head unit down from line 4. So all of this I find is easy to remember and as I draw the figure I'm always considering these head units. So you can see from observing these drawings that the top half of the figure down to the crotch is 4 head units tall and the lower half of the figure, the legs, is also 4 head units tall and so that's a very helpful measurement to remember. The top half of the body is the same length as the lower half. So as I draw all of this out, I make sure to jot down all of these notes alongside my drawing and you'll often see me make notes like this. So we know the height of the figure, 8 head units, now the width of the figure is 2 and 1 third head units wide. A few more key points to remember are things like the elbows being on line with the navel, line 5, and the hands dropping down to about one third of a head unit up from line 3. I know that I'm just repeating a lot of the information right from the book here, but this is what I spent a good amount of time studying, and I draw these front, side and back views out a few times to help familiarise myself with these head units.
So as I said, I am referring to the earlier pages in Andrew Loomis's figure drawing book here, and shortly after he explains this system using eight head units, he begins to introduce a simplified model of the human figure, and he refers to this as the mannequin frame. And this mannequin does well to strip away all of the detail, and he has you drawing what's more like a, a stick figure. But you know, it's a lot more than that because it still involves many of the features, but now they are just simplified. And if there's one thing I'm all about, it's simplifying. And I mean, those diagrams I had started to draw out are fine as a way to note down the proportions, but it's not practical for a beginner to be trying to draw the figure like that at the start. For now, I am totally ignoring the muscles, and for a good while, I am going to be focusing on this mannequin and developing this. Then I'll study the skeleton and work from the inside out. I want to be able to draw this mannequin frame in many positions from my imagination before I even consider studying the muscles that lay on top. So if you look at what I'm drawing here, you'll see that these head units still apply to this mannequin. Each of these lines crosses a specific point on the figure. Now it's all good being able to draw front, side and back views like this because they are essentially just two dimensional profile views, but it becomes a lot more challenging when you are tasked with drawing this mannequin in various positions. So as I do this, I still draw out some grid lines to remind myself to consider the size of these units as I draw out various poses. Again, at this stage, I am still copying examples from the book and familiarising myself with this approach. I found it very enjoyable to draw out these mannequins because even though they are very much simplified, they still do well to represent the figure and knowing that you are drawing these out and the proportions are correct, it's a good feeling and it, it made me feel like I was making some progress, so soon after referring to Loomis's examples in the book, I started to draw out some of my own. Now he states that these figures should be based on a distribution of the weight of the body, so I was mindful of that as I did this. Also because I was drawing these from my imagination, I found that I would make more of my decisions as I went, like I started to feel these figures more and pose them in positions which felt right. I was also constantly checking the proportions, looking at the existing figures I had drawn, and also reminding myself of the key points that I had learned earlier on. An important one is the two halves of the upper body and lower body being the same size. But with all that being said, I wasn't obsessing over getting these proportions right, I also just wanted to get the hang of drawing these mannequins. I do want to say as well that even though I am gradually progressing through this book, I'm being cautious because I don't want to get too ahead of myself, you know, like I want to spend an adequate amount of time in certain areas before moving on, so expect to see some more of these stick-like mannequins in the future. Now currently, these mannequins are more like sticks, like their arms and legs are just lines and so, as expected, Andrew Loomis develops this into a more detailed mannequin, and this one involves some features which really do well to represent the general form of the human figure. We have a ball for the torso, and he has what is referred to as a cape, laying over this to form the shoulders and the chest, along with the back which tapers down to the pelvis. Now the pelvis is shown as two discs, and then of course the arms and legs have some form to them now, and they are shown more like the bird of the skeleton.
So here I spend some time drawing this detailed mannequin and I found this one obviously to be more challenging because I was essentially drawing these forms in perspective now. Loomis does state that expression is more important than accuracy here and so with that in mind after warming up a bit I started to try and keep my lines loose. I found that his examples appeared to be more gestural and roughly drawn and so I was continuing to consider the proportions but I was also trying to capture more action and life in these figures and I think this is where I'll spend a lot of time before moving on and he even says in the book that all of the time that you spend with this mannequin will be pay big dividends moving forwards. I am happy with the progress that I made here and, you know, I have to start somewhere. That's also a point I want to make, you know, for a while I was thinking, where should I start? There's so much to this subject that it's hard to figure out where I should spend my time, but I eventually came to this conclusion that it's better to just start doing anything and change course as you go, as opposed to not starting at all. So I do expect to change my approach along the way as I broaden my understanding of anatomy. It's like when I was learning perspective. If I knew what I know now, I would have approached that subject differently and been more efficient when learning everything, but then in the end, I did get there. It's just likely to take more time when you are teaching yourself. So this is where I will end this first session. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to what's to come. If you want to see the final pages from this video, then I will be posting them onto Patreon, so head over there for a closer look. I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.